Hi friends and welcome to the start of a very extra special vlog because friends we're going book shopping together. We've officially reached my favorite point of the book lover life cycle where in which I have done a huge book unhaul recently meaning I can take all of those books take them to my local used bookstore turn them in for store credit and then turn those books into new books. And of course, I'm going to be taking you guys along. This is truly one of my favorite mornings that happens every few months when I finally have the willpower to get rid of books because there's a carrot at the end of it, new books. <laughs> but let's go ahead and head out to the bookstore. Matilda has placed herself for scale, but this time around I have four full tote bags of books to bring in to get store credit for, which I'm pretty jazzed about. So we're now going to load these up and head out and see what we can get. I've enlisted my muscle to help with the, uh, the heavy lifting, if you will. And we're officially off. Maybe I'll pick, maybe I'll take one. There we go. Oh gosh. Oh, oh, that's heavy. My favorite fake shot to film it. friends I'm officially back home from all of my book shopping and I'm happy to report I got quite the haul in today I was able to buy I want to say six or so books which I am pretty pleased with and they gave me a coupon book which I'm really excited to look at oh 10% off Alrighty, the first book I saw, I was honestly so pleased to see, and that is The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. This is the third and final book to the Age of Madness trilogy, which obviously I have not started yet, but I do own books one and two, and this is a trilogy I hope to get to soon after I complete the standalone novels that exist between this series. With that in mind though, I was so pleased to see this because this is definitely a new copy. They had like five of these on the shelf for some reason, and I honestly gasped when I saw them. I was also previously able to get the second book in this series in hardcover in like new condition also at this used bookstore so needless to say I feel like I struck gold but the Age of Madness series is a series set in the same world as all of Joe Abercrombie's books but Joe Abercrombie in particular is known for his grim dark worlds and characters that somehow you are very endeared to despite the fact that they are pretty much terrible people. All of his characters really push the edge of morality and make the reader really confront a variety of things, combining that with really fast-paced plots, really character-focused fantasy worlds, which I personally enjoy, and just very unexpected twists and turns, especially because a lot of his characters are hard to predict because their moral compass isn't like a standard hero's journey, if you know what I mean. But yes, I'm so happy that I officially have this entire completed trilogy on my shelf, and I was able to get the third book in hardcover for such a good price. Next book I grabbed, I was again thrilled to see at such a fantastic price because I have been wanting to buy this for forever, but it's hard for me to bite the bullet sometimes on hardcover short story collections because they're so expensive and not very long. But I found this book for under $10 and that is The River of Silver by S.A. Chakraborty. And this is a series of short stories set in the same world as the Davabad series. And I believe the stories themselves span a huge variety of times, some taking place before the events of the trilogy and some taking place after 
after. Obviously, the Davabad trilogy is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, so needless to say, I'm excited to have this beautiful uh, short story collection to add to my shelf. But if you're not familiar with the Davabad series or this world, we basically follow our main character who we find initially in 1800s Cairo, and she is basically a thief by day to survive. Unfortunately, though, at the beginning of the book, she accidentally like unleashes a warrior jinn from a stolen lamp, and this begins a series of events that bring her to the jinn world full of magic. There she not only gets wrapped up in politics, but also finds kind of like a hidden legacy of her own family that's tied to this very magical place, full of incredibly complex politics, really dynamic characters, emotional and breathtaking. I loved the trilogy so much, so obviously I'm thrilled to have this collection, Tales from the Davabad Trilogy. I hope to read this soon. The next two books I picked up are actually by the same author. He's a sci-fi author that I've been really looking to get into this year. And I haven't read any books by him yet. So for some reason, I thought it was a really good idea to pick up two more books of his before I even read one book of his. But I just have a strong feeling and there were such good deals, like I couldn't say no. The first book is The Doors of Eden. And this is the third book to the Guns of Dawn series. I actually already own book one and I plan to read it soon. Obviously, I still need to pick up book two. But when I saw book three, again, for such a good price, I decided to add it to my collection. This series opens up with the last remnants of humanity fleeing a dying earth, following the footsteps of their ancestors to basically travel to the stars to this new planet that is supposed to be like an Eden to them, a paradise, a place that will give them the perfect opportunity to carry on humanity in a new location and time. However, though, when they get there, they realize they're not the first to arrive and actually a new set of masters actually exists there. And it is said that it now gives refuge to mankind's worst nightmare. Now two civilizations are on a collision course, testing the boundaries of what each side will do to survive as the fate of humanity is up in the air who are the true heirs of this new earth again this series just sounds incredibly intense said to be a page turner and just full of really interesting themes expressed in this sci-fi world so again you know i picked up book three i already have book one so all i'll need is book two you know and then i also grabbed shards of earth by the same author but this is actually book one to a series i didn't just jump to the end and this is part of the final architecture series and this series introduces us to our main character idris and idris was once considered an elite soldier made to basically fight an enemy that appeared out of the blue one day in space called the architects his body was basically augmented to not only be a more powerful soldier Soldier, but also be able to communicate directly with these aliens until one day the aliens themselves completely disappeared without a trace. Now Idris is considered kind of obsolete within this new earth society and government and he finds himself just working on a scrap vessel just trying to make a living for himself kind of avoid the attention of greater powers despite his storied and decorated past until one day he stumbles upon an unexpected piece of like technology and things seemingly begin to get complicated once again first book to what appears to be another space opera by this author again sort of exploring some classic sci-fi tropes and themes which i personally really enjoy but i hear this is also action-packed and this is just an author I'm really curious about. So I saw two books of his and I grabbed them. The last two books I grabbed are actually literary fiction. The first is The Girls by Emma Klein. I read The Guest by this author last year for my book club and I actually really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Emma Klein's writing style. I found it to be really captivating and propulsive. And while I really enjoyed The Guest, I read over and over and over again that while The Guest was good, The Girls by this same author was even better. And the setting and time frame of this book also really calls out to me. But this book is set in the 60s and Northern California and we follow a young and really introspective teenager named Evie and one day Evie is at the park and she notices a group of girls that she's immediately sort of drawn to. She's captivated by their confidence, their carefree attitude and she begins to make friends with them. She also begins to get pulled into some unexpected situations, namely these girls are involved with this sort of remote ranch cult group probably tied to Charles Manson, just reading over the synopsis. From there, we follow Evie as she gets drawn more and more in by this group of girls and also begins to separate herself further from her family. This is said to be like razor sharp, but also said to have like very sharp psychological insight too. I'm really curious not only by the time period, but also just the concept of this book itself. I already know I like this author's writing, so I was really excited to see when this was on the shelf. And the last book I picked up at the used bookstore is actually a new release. Um, which I was really excited to see because it's actually my current 
pick for my IRL book club. So I was really thrilled I was able to use my store credit to grab this. It's also a book I feel like I'm going to really enjoy and that is Good Material by Dolly Alderton. This is an author I've actually never read before, but I feel like just based on what I've seen and heard from my own friends, I feel like I'm going to really enjoy her books. They're said to be really insightful, but still full of humor. Just lots of things to digest and take away with, you know what I mean? But this book follows our main character, Andy. And at the beginning of this book, Andy is struggling. Andy loves Jen and Jen loved Andy and he can't really figure out why and when she stopped and they have since broken up. Andy is kind of listless. He's kind of stuck. He's kicked out of his old apartment. He's waiting for his stand-up career to sort of take off. He's basically adrift and he's really, really focusing and deep diving into why his love life like didn't work out because maybe if he can find an answer to why Jen left him, he'll be able to figure out a way to win her back. This is said to be a sharply funny and exquisitely relatable account of romantic disaster and friendship. Dolly Alderton offers up a love story showcasing apparently why Dolly Alderson is one of the most exciting voices of our current writing generation. So not only do I feel like this is going to be a fantastic book club pick, I also just feel like I'm going to love this book in general and the cover is honestly amazing. I love the use of colors. I love just everything about it. It's just a really well constructed book which we can appreciate too, you know? Alrighty guys, that is the end of my book shopping and book haul. We love the cycle of life where in which a book unhaul turns into more books than I'm able to add to my shelf and read, at least personally, I love it very much. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.